Space tourism has gone from sci-fi fantasy to actual reality, and Florida is going to be at the heart of it all. Would you take a trip to space if you could? In this video, we're diving into how the Sunshine State is becoming the launch pad for everyone from billionaires to thrill-seeking tourists, and what that might mean for your next Florida vacation. Until recently, the closest a Florida tourist could get to space was riding Space Mountain, a roller coaster that's all about getting an unexpected chiropractic adjustment in the pitch black. My back! Oh, my back! Or maybe braving Mission Space at Epcot and questioning all your life's choices somewhere between Earth and a simulated Mars. And it's the only ride that comes complete with an easy to reach air sickness bag, which should tell you all you need to know about that one. But now you can actually leave the planet for real, and you don't even have to pass through a gift shop first. Space tourism is no longer a futuristic fantasy, it's a rapidly growing industry. We're talking real, paying passengers blasting off aboard rockets, or in some cases, high-tech space balloons to experience zero gravity and stunning views of Earth. The industry took off, literally, thanks to companies like SpaceX, Blue Origin, and Virgin Galactic, and what started as a billionaire playground is slowly becoming accessible to, well, millionaires at least. And yeah, this actually happened. Katy Perry went to space recently, not for a music video, but for real. But that trip wasn't without controversy. Perry faced significant backlash for referring to herself as an astronaut, a title many felt was undeserved for a brief little suborbital flight, and critics argued that that term should be reserved for professionals who undergo extensive training and contribute to scientific missions. And adding fuel to the fire, during the flight, Perry held up a daisy to the camera, a tribute to her daughter, Daisy Dove Bloom. While personal, the moment was widely mocked online as awkward and self-indulgent, and she also made a public display of kissing the ground upon the spacecraft's return, a gesture a lot thought was a little bit too theatrical. The backlash was swift, social media users and even fellow celebrities criticized the mission's high cost, environmental impact, and perceived silliness. She later did address the criticism, expressing regret over making the journey a public spectacle. But still, the incident did raise questions. Will stunts like this tarnish the public's view of space tourism? So why is Florida the space tourism launch pad of the future? Well, three reasons. Location, location, and of course, location. Cape Canaveral is located relatively close to the equator, which makes launches more energy efficient. It's been America's primary spaceport since the Apollo era, and the infrastructure here is already top notch. Kennedy Space Center handles dozens of launches each year, with NASA and other private space companies all having a presence here. In fact, in 2024 alone, Florida saw 93 launches, a brand new record. The space industry here contributes billions of dollars annually to the Florida economy and supports tens of thousands of jobs. Brevard County literally rebranded itself as the Space Coast and markets heavily to space curious tourists, and their area code 321 wasn't just a coincidence either. They chose that in honor of the space program. And towns like Titusville have rebounded from the post-shuttle slump and now thrive on launch tourism and aerospace contracts. People will come out here, visit Cape Canaveral, book hotels, eat at restaurants, and plan a day at the beach around watching a rocket go up, all while spending money here while they do. So what does a space vacation actually look like? Blue Origin's New Shepard suborbital flights give you about 11 minutes in space for a price range I've seen anywhere between $200,000 to $450,000 per seat. Yeah, 11 minutes for at least 200 grand. That's the one that Katy Perry took. SpaceX is aiming a little higher, literally and financially, with three-day orbital flights priced well into the millions. Their Inspiration4 mission cost over $50 million per seat for a three-day trip. You can buy a lot of fast passes for Space Mountain with that kind of dough. But not all space tourism ventures have soared. Take Space Perspective, a Florida-based startup that aimed to offer a gentler ride to the stars. Their vision was a serene six-hour journey to 100,000 feet aboard a pressurized capsule, lifted by a massive hydrogen balloon. Passengers would enjoy panoramic views from the edge of space, complete with cocktails and Wi-Fi, all for a cool 125,000 bucks. In September of 2024, they successfully conducted a test flight, 
demonstrating the feasibility of their concept, but by early 2025, a financial turbulence hit. The company faced eviction from its Titusville facility over $90,000 in unpaid rent and had to furlough most of its staff. And while Space Perspective has since ceased operations, the allure of high-altitude balloon tourism remains. Their successful test flight proved the method's viability, leaving the door open for future ventures to pick up where they left off. Florida isn't just the launch pad of the present, it's going to be the backbone of the future when it comes to space tourism. And here's what's in the pipeline from the big three players in this space. Blue Origin is building and going to be launching the new Glenn from right here in Florida. This is a massive orbital rocket that's being built at Exploration Park near Kennedy Space Center and launched from Launch Complex 36 at Cape Canaveral. The first successful test flight happened back in January of 2025. This one is going to be used mostly for lifting heavy payloads into space, but there is some potential for space tourism with this one in the future. Blue Origin does plan to scale up their civilian launches over the next few years, with future missions potentially including high-end tourist experiences in orbit. And then there's Orbital Reef. This is a private commercial space station being co-developed with Sierra Space, and it's going to be designed for research, industry, and yeah, space tourism. It's going to be kind of like a space hotel for the uber wealthy with launch support and infrastructure based right here in Florida. It's kind of like if Disney's Galactic Star Cruiser was actually real. Over at SpaceX, Kennedy Space Center's Launch Complex 39A is where their Dragon spacecraft launches missions today, and they've been exploring options for more Dragon flights for private citizens and space tourists, including multi-day civilian orbital trips from Florida. These missions launching from Florida will include the first spacewalk by a private crew and are laying the groundwork for private moon trips. So yeah, one day you could be taking a tourist trip to the moon, just like in the movie Airplane 2, if you're a billionaire. And the third big player in this space is Virgin Galactic. And they currently operate out of New Mexico's Spaceport America, but they have publicly explored expansion to Florida in anticipation of its upcoming Delta-class spacecraft, which is expected to begin commercial flights by 2026. Florida's Kennedy Space Center and Shuttle Landing Facility are rumored to be big contenders for future operations for them here. Virgin's Delta-class space planes will dramatically increase capacity with potential for 100-plus flights per year and hundreds of tourists launched from Florida within a few years, if the facility is confirmed. So whether it's orbital hotels, balloon cruises to the stratosphere, or strapping into a space plane that takes off like a first-class jet, Florida is going to be the heart of it all. But if you're like the rest of us and you're one of the 99.9% .9 of people who can't yet afford a trip to space in a real rocket or space balloon, I would highly recommend a trip to the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Center. I love this place and I think it's a place that everybody either living in Florida or visiting Florida should try to visit at least once. You can watch actual rocket launches, meet real astronauts, and stock up on enough freeze-dried ice cream to survive a zombie apocalypse. The Space Shuttle Atlantis exhibit lets you stand nose to nose with the historic vehicle and the shuttle launch experience is a motion simulator that recreates the sensation of blasting off but without that six-figure price tag. And it might be the closest thing most of us will ever get to experiencing real space travel. There's also immersive attractions like the Heroes and Legends Astronaut Hall of Fame, the Rocket Garden, and the new Gateway Deep Space Launch Complex that showcases future space flight technology. And don't forget to take the bus tour here. It will take you out to the launch pads, past the towering vehicle assembly building, and the Apollo Space Program Museum, where you're gonna to get to stand underneath a truly massive Saturn rocket and learn all about the program that first put us on the moon. It is a can't miss. And nearby hotels in Titusville and Cocoa Beach now offer launch view hotel rooms, and local tour companies sell VIP rocket watching cruises, where you can go out into the water and watch a launch with a cocktail in your hand. And of course, space flight has been a mainstay of Florida's theme parks with rides like Mission Space, Space Mountain, Star Tours, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, and even the new roller coaster Stardust Racers at Epic Universe. But it's not all zero-G selfies and freeze-dried food. There's some real challenges and some really valid concerns here. Environmental concerns about rocketed missions for launches that could just be seen as wasteful ways for the ultra-rich to chase clout instead of real science and advancing technology which is why I think that space balloon idea sounds kind of intriguing. I like that one. 
Space junk is another big concern. The more stuff we launch up there means more and more little bits of it end up floating around in orbit, and then it can become more difficult and more dangerous just to launch missions at all. Hitting a floating bolt at 25,000 miles per hour is gonna leave a dent, to say the least. And let's face it, space travel isn't exactly budget friendly, at least not yet, and it probably won't be for quite a while. Is spending hundreds of millions of dollars just so some of the richest people on the planet can cosplay as John Glenn for a few minutes, really the best use of resources. But still though, the future of space tourism in Florida is pretty promising. Analysts expect suborbital flights to become far more common in the next decade with space hotels, yes, actual orbiting hotels on the horizon eventually. And like most things related to technology, the prices will eventually come down. But at price levels that are attainable to the average person, we'll just have to see. But Florida is on the way to becoming the world capital of vacation space launches. So that's Florida's role in the future of space tourism. It's already here and it's only going to get a lot bigger. And let me know in the comments, would you go to space if you had the chance? Personally, I think I would. I'm nowhere close to being able to afford it, but if given the chance, I think I would. And I really think that space balloon is pretty cool. And please don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more Florida adventures. It really means a lot to me. I sincerely appreciate it and it really helps the channel grow. And stay safe out there. I'll see you around the Sunshine State.